Finance Committee to order. Um, first of all, the minutes. Um, do I have a motion on the minutes? No. One change. Okay, let me get a motion first. Uh, uh, so oh, moved. Okay, you're right, I'm sorry. Ken? Uh, it was the fire budget was approved, not the police. On page two. Thank you. Okay. okay, are there any other corrections? Mary Margaret? On the first page, under, um, when you're talking about water bodies, you turn the way down, I think you meant the CONCOM. It's... Not the COCOM? Right. You see it's right, right on above the maintain them, just under the $40,000 request. Okay, are there any other yeah. corrections? Okay, Peter, under revaluation, the subspecies don't match up to the 50,000. They have a quality review of industrial 25, 30, 40, 55,000, if that's what that. See what I mean? Uh, that's what he said, though. <laughs> <laughs> they do have a balance available from the past year. If you're concerned about that, we can just take the uh, detail out. Uh, yeah. Just take the dollars out. The breakdown, you mean? Yeah. Okay, are there any other corrections? Uh, that is under. Oh, uh, under Harry Barber. Introduced the park, described the program. The C? Yeah. Okay. Okay, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Okay, are there any further discussion or corrections? Okay, all those in favor of the minutes as uh, corrected, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Just a couple of quick things. Anybody, everybody has their finance committee handbook from the state association. I got a couple more copies, so I'm assuming everybody has them now. If you don't, you know, see me at the end. Uh, conflicts of interest. I think these have got to be done by early April. So if you've got them done, print them out. And be careful when you print them out. Sometimes weird things happen. Uh, but print them out, and, uh, save a copy for yourself, and let me have one. Uh, OK, on the calendar. Just quickly, does everybody have one of these? Okay. Um, gotten almost everybody back on these Saturdays, and I'm hoping we don't have to do any. There will be no meeting this Saturday, so just cross off Saturday the 7th. And I will leave the 14th and 28th open. Um, if we're meeting the 14th, I'll let you know next Monday. Um, we've lost three days, um, but then again, the warrant is not all that huge, so uh, on that. The last meeting, uh, sort of work meeting, will be March 30th. So I want to get everything wrapped up by the 30th. Uh, there will be no meeting on April 1st, 6th, or 8th. No meetings on April 1st, 6th, or 8th. There will be a tentative meeting on Monday, April 13th. Okay. So no meeting the first, sixth, or eighth. Tentative meeting on the thirteenth. No meeting this Saturday, uh, and we'll see how we get going as far as the fourteenth or the twenty-eighth. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, today, the major business uh, is Minuteman. Uh, and so uh, we have here the superintendent and uh, finance director, Kevin Mahoney. Yep. Kevin, I've known Ed, I've known Kevin longer than I've known you. <laughs> okay, uh, to do a presentation on the budget uh, with, uh, after we finish that, which is the main business before us, uh, he could go through uh, some areas on the, uh, on the building project and where that stands and take any questions. So, Edward? Thanks, Al, and uh, thanks for uh, letting us come here tonight. I'm gonna, <clears throat> I'm fighting kind of a cold, so can you hear me all right? Usually that's not a problem. The first 15 slides are pages one through eight on the hand on the uh, PowerPoint focus on the budget. We also have some copies of the budget book uh, in the back that we sent you a link to, and if, if anyone would like them, we can. We only have about 10 hard copies. The rest we sent to you uh, electronically. <clears throat> and then there's a number of things we could talk about after the budget at this time. Okay. So on page two, slide uh, four, our overall budget is up less than 1%, 0.9%. And of course, um, the final budget numbers <coughs> in terms of revenue would be finalized when the uh, governor's budget comes out soon, we hope. Or maybe we don't hope. Um, on page five, you'll see some of the impacts to the FY16 budget. It's the first budget really where we're beginning to implement the vote of the school committee to create a smaller school of 628 pupils. Um, under the new educational program plan, we're implementing 16 programs. We're closing three programs. Um, the FY16 budget is the first time we will have established an OPEB trust and make a uh, contribution to it of 50,000. A relatively small contribution, but nonetheless, we're um, working towards that liability. We're continuing to fund critical repairs to the building. Our health insurance, um, we're anticipating a 7% increase. And we're in the process right now of, of rebidding our transportation route. With 16 towns, we have quite an expensive transportation budget relative to some other regional schools, and that's um, in the FY16 budget. There have been some revisions that were, um, I don't want to say imposed, but I'll say imposed upon us by the Department of Education, where for member communities, there'll be no individual special ed assessments. Special ed is part of our overall operating budget and will be assessed as part of the general operating um, assessment. <coughs> Non-resident communities will continue to pay an additional assessment for special ed of $4,500 per pupil. And that's based upon a formula that's really based upon last year's actual expenditures on special ed for non-residents. On page uh, four, slide seven, I wanted to bring up some impacts beyond FY16 in terms of budgets for FY17 and 18. As I said, we're continuing to um, move towards the smaller school enrollment of 628 and 16 programs. What that means is that it will have cost implications basically based upon the Department of Ed's procedure for closing a program. Any freshmen or sophomores who are in a program that's closing, Miniman is required to provide that full program until they graduate as seniors. So we're not going to be admitting students to those programs, but we're still going to be carrying those program costs, which are largely, as you can imagine, staffing costs. So there'll be a, uh, an impact in 17 and 18 regarding those closures. Okay. Ed, could I ask you which programs are being closed? Uh, we're closing marketing. We're closing telecommunications, <coughs> and this year um, drafting was finally closed. And we're merging two programs into other programs. For, for instance, 
heating, ventilating, and air conditioning will no longer be a standalone program. In the smaller school, it will be part of the plumbing program. And uh, our metal fabrication and welding program will become part of a new program of advanced manufacturing. <coughs> um, slide eight shows overall enrollment. Uh, we had a dip of about 25, 26 students in, from member towns. Overall, a reduction of about 40 students from member towns and non-member towns this um, past October 1. And looking towards next year's enrollment, we're, um, as I said, we're in somewhat of a difficult position where we're contracting the size of the school, yet we're still trying to maximize enrollment. We're seeing a lot more interest. This is just a side. There's a little slide about it right now. We're seeing a, a, a markedly increase in interest from our member town middle school families. We've had over 300 eighth grade parents and students visit the school in uh, tour days, open houses. Um, I had a superintendent's dinner for middle school parents a few weeks ago. Um, and shadow days where students come and will spend a full day at the school. And last week during vacation week, we had a very successful girls in STEM program for girls in primarily seventh and eighth grade. And of the 30 students, I believe 28 of them were from member district communities. Um, and that resulted in a couple of applications to Minuteman for the coming September. So we're seeing some, um, some very critical enrollment positive interest in Minuteman from our member district communities. Can you comment on why? Um, I think there are three reasons why. One is the perception of career tech ed overall is improving. Um, if you look across the Commonwealth, the number of students on waiting lists at vocational technical schools has increased. Um, I read a, 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 an article just today that was published in the Worcester paper there, uh, where they looked at the central Massachusetts vocational programs. And across the Commonwealth, there are 4,000 students on waiting lists. So I think the, the perceptions of, the negative perceptions are beginning to change. Um, it's not what vocational education was just 15 years ago. Um, and parents are really seeing the value add of a, a hands-on, contextual, experiential learning program. So I think that's one reason. And of course, you may know Minuteman's been featured on a number of national media um, stories in the last, uh, this fall. We were on NPR, we were on Marketplace, um, uh, Nesson, the, the, the TV folks were there for our s Girls in STEM program. Uh, we've been featured <coughs> in a new book that was published by, uh, called Job U, about apprenticeships and vocational technical education. <coughs> So we're seeing some, some changes in how people view what we do. I'd say the second uh, thing beyond uh, the perception changing is that we're doing uh, a much more focused and intensive strategic plan. We're implementing it now around marketing, recruitment, and retention. Um, retention is, is, is a key factor. Um, and we're working with a national expert. His, his name is Mark Perna. And he's had a tremendous amount of success around the country in working with schools like Minuteman and improving their percentage of eighth grade applications. Because when we look at that number, and this is the third reason, I think if we look at just the numbers, um, in the district of Minuteman as it currently is configured, there are between 37 and 4,000 eighth graders every year. Historically, we've averaged less than 4% of those students have applied to Minuteman. On the average, a suburban vocational schools application rate is about 7%. If we hit 6%, within four years, we'll have a school of over 600 just with member district communities. And Mr. Perner has seen the, uh, the data around the number of eighth graders, and he feels it's a, uh, uh, a target-rich environment, is his words. Um, so we're optimistic about, um, about the enrollment going forward. And if we're fortunate enough to get a renovation, I think that will just help. But I don't think it's the only answer, or um, nor do we consider it the only answer. Ed, do those member towns include grad students? Post-grad students? No. 
In the, some of these numbers here, they do, though. Well, yes, yeah. I was thinking the overall enrollment. The overall enrollment includes postgrads, okay. yes. I'm pretty, yes, it does. On the next page, you can see just the high school enrollment, grades 9 through 12. After four years of increasing, we had a slight drop this year in our freshman class. Um, and then below in slide 10, you can see the Arlington enrollment has been um, up and down, but steadily over 150 for the last uh, two years. Um, the Arlington assessment is up about uh, $230,000, even though enrollment is down slightly. And as you recall from these discussions, that's because the overall enrollment went down and Arlington's share has gone up slightly. Um, and the total in assessment is for about $4 million for 152 total FTE students. And that increase in the, uh, I should say our budget's up only 0.9%, <coughs> which is good. And that's reflective of us going towards a smaller school. But in uh, assessments to member towns is up by 5.9% overall. And that's due to a change in the revenue, um, which we see in slide 12. Uh, we're anticipating some slight increases in revenue reimbursements from Chapter 78 and transportation aid, but we're seeing a large reduction in non-resident tuition. That's due into the overall enrollment down for non-residents as well as the commissioners moving forward with the reduction of out-of-district tuition rates currently at 142 percent of foundation down to 125 percent of foundation. Yes, sir. Would you like to entertain questions now or at the sure. end? Sure. Up to the, through the chair, I guess. Maybe you are very interested and I missed it, but why is the non-resident tuition down? I mean, non-resident uh, tuition down? Is the commissioner it? sets the tuition rate. So the, the, right now we're charging about 18300 That's the maximum allowable per pupil. That does not include to it, uh, transportation. That does not include special education costs. That's the base tuition rate. Um, next year we're anticipating, and the commissioner has confirmed that, that he's going to reduce that again. And I forget what the dollar ends up, about eighteen. It's about, it's probably about a... Eight or nine hundred dollar reduction from where it is this what, year. What is the rationale for that? If I may ask. Uh, to speak candidly, uh, it's political pressure from the big cities around around us, who send us a lot of students. Uh, is the, are the numbers down as well? The overall <coughs> numbers of currently, no, no, not, not I mean, they're down a bit as well. Yes. What kind of percentage relative to the overall? It's a total of 25 students uh -huh. out of uh, 330, so about 8 or 9 percent. So, um, well, what, is, what is the total amount that a non-resident student would pay you? What would be the total income that you would get for a non-resident student? Well, if you figure about half of them are, are on IEPs, yeah. it'd be about twenty-one, twenty-two thousand per pupil, roughly. Plus transportation, but we don't provide that, so that's paid for by their sending community in some way. Can you finish, John? Yes. Yeah. Okay, Dean. Okay, so going back a couple of years, um, maybe even a few years, there was a period of time where the current year tuition line was very large and the prior year tuition line was small. And we yep. had discussions here about how um, there was a policy shift made, and I remember it quite well because we got hammered over it, which is part of the reason we had those large increases with uh, whoever it is up there committee whatever made the decision to stop relying on current year tuition and they 
started relying on the prior year tuition. And there was a whole yeah. rationale you would explain to us how it would be helpful and we wouldn't have these volatilities in revenue and it would be easier to plan and all that. So when I look at this, obviously the big reason we're going up 5.7% versus a budget of less than 1% is we're, we're making up for that debt in prior year tuition. I mean, you just, if you just look at the chart, we're up, member towns are up 620, prior year tuition is down 550. It's just yep. the offset of how you get there, okay? We're on the same page so far. Um, and that's because, really not, we, we talk about the charge of towns, but it's because you have 24 less kids. 24 less kids times $20,000 a kid. So that's 480,000, that's about 547. So we can probably figure out how you get into the rest <coughs> of the budget. But that's, that's where we are on the revenue side, okay? And I, I might be jumping ahead here, but the reason I wanted to get to that is the, the decrease in revenue is ultimately because of decreases in the enrollment of kids. So of non-member kids, yes. Non-member kids drove this line, drove our line up. Yes. So at the end, and I'll, I'll, I'll hold it, but when I'm going with this on the next page, just so I want to make sure we're on the same page here, yep. if the budget goes up 1% on a declining enrollment, that's kind of the challenge, I think. But I'll wait, I just want to make sure we're on the same page here. We're on exactly the same page. Okay. Carolyn? Yes. And yet, the number you just quoted is different from the, is lower than the per pupil numbers I've seen here. The per pupil on the, the Arlington assessment? On the Arlington estimate assessment. And I'm looking at this fed cost, and that may be different. Well, those numbers on the Arlington assessment page there, slide 11, they don't directly relate at all to what is charged to non member communities. I know well, I. What's charged to non-member communities is set by the commissioner. But I thought you said that they're charged a, a 120 to 142 percent more of the foundation budget, of the, oh. which oh, is well, 16 something or other. Which is nothing to do with the town. Uh, very little. Okay, so the foundation I assume is a vocational it's education foundation. Yes. Okay, are there any other questions? So again, okay, Ed. On the revenue plan on page seven, um, it reflects just what we were speaking about. Uh, you can see the uh, FY16 proposed revenue plan, assessments to member towns, chapter 70A, transportation reimbursement, a drop in prior year tuition, a uh, <coughs> slight increase in the current year tuition. That's tuition we're going to collect next year and a level contribution from our excess and deficiency and that results in an overall budget um, increase of uh, 185,000 it doesn't result in but funds a budget increase of 185,000 um, the budget as proposed by state function code uh, which was approved by the school committee back in January um, administration is down 75,000 the 2,000 account line is student instructional services. That's up 196,000. That's basically reflective of a three-year contract that was recently ratified by the school committee and the teachers of a 2% um, increase this year, next year, and the third year. Um, and other um, insurances and leases. I should point out that the debt service has increased 56,000 and uh, Kevin, correct me, but that's because we have a, uh, a payment on our feasibility bond note that's due because we're in the fourth, this will be the fifth year of it. Yeah, but for the financing, it'll be the third year requiring a third year uh, requiring. principal pay down on the short term borrowing. Okay, Ed, yep. the, um, on the one above 13, uh, your prior year, uh, prior year tuition. So when you're planning to take 5418352 does that wipe wipe out that fund? Pretty close to it, yes. 
That's the money that we're collecting now. But as you may recall, we're not allowed, well, we send the bills out in December and in March. December and uh, April. Yep. December. I'm off a month each way. So we're, we haven't collected much of anything right now of that $5.4 million. Okay. But we know that that number is reasonable based on the billings that we've done to date. Okay. Uh, date we own the slot. We own the slide 14. I'm assuming still. 13, 13 and 14. Yeah. Yeah, we're on 14. We're on 14. So this sort of the question I, I sort of set up is um, if you're moving to a lower headcount school, you need to be moving to a lower cost school. Yes. And um, while we can say that our, on the by account code 2000 student instructional services that it's whatever it is 2.8 percent or the number went up, but it seems like a uh, a contractual amount. We, first, we have like a nine percent across the board decrease in children. We have a large mm -hmm. decrease in non-member and, and member, and that that increase here is coming on the back of seven point eight percent last year and some some big numbers behind that. I mean, I'm looking at the book we got last year, and our FY 2012 for that same line was eight million. So I, you know, I feel like we have this thing, and it's sort of you know, costs are going up, students are going down, and we're getting. Of that, a real good X out of it. Um, so what's going on? We well, as I said, we, we're not, it's not going to be a linear relationship between enrollment and costs. We're required to keep programs running until the seniors are graduating. Those vocational technical programs have to be fully staffed until the last student graduates. So we're not going to really be able to capture the full benefit of reduced expenses in a smaller school so probably year three, we'll start to see some more significant decreases, and then in year four, it'll be settled out ongoing. Couldn't your tuition so, amount to another school? No. Well, right, but, but the problem with that is, the problem with this whole concept of moving to a smaller school is, you know, <coughs> we just went through a three-year cycle where we went with this current year, prior year tuition shift, and Arlington being the largest member took one hell of a beating over it. Now we're going through another thing that looks like it's almost designed to kick the crap out of us again. I mean, because that's what's going to happen is you're going to create, <coughs> you just said it, you're creating negative leverage on, on, on reducing the number of kids in the school. So if someone were to say, if someone said to me, so let me just finish. So if I had to, if I had to chart this out, right, I would say for the next two years, the overall cost of school will go up 1% a year and Arlington will continue to go up 6, 7%. Because our into school tuition, our tuition is going to have to make up the reduction when you keep dropping out of district kids to get down to 628 until you can get to a comfortable level. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what you mean by negative leverage. Negative leverage well, meaning like if, if you have 700 kids in the school and then you have 650 kids in the school spread over four grades. It's not like you can get rid. It's not like you can decrease the school by two or three teachers. The way the programs are set up and things like that, you're right. Your teachers create almost a fixed cost base yeah. that are difficult to move out because you know you might have twenty, you might have thirty. You know, out of those fifty kids in my hypothetical, they're spread across different majors, mm -hmm. and so the overall cost of the school might be able to somewhat get a little sort of nip around the edges, but a lot of the revenue coming out is going to be out of district and it's going to be made up by us. Yes. That will continue and it'll probably accelerate. Right. Alan? Hey, I understand that closing the programs you don't realize the savings for maybe three years. You're also um, combining some programs and adding some new programs. Are there uh, sort of one-time costs associated with adding those new programs as well? Um, it would that aren't related to, to, to uh, uh, if they are, they would be. Since we're we're, we're going to be reducing staff, the one-time cost would be, if we're still in the building that we're in, we'd have to be making some uh, renovations to certain areas to accommodate programs that weren't designed to be there. Um, we haven't, we don't anticipate those for next year or the year after. Um, if they, if we have them, they would be small and. and taking care of them in our regular 
capital repair uh, budget. I guess what I'm what I'm trying to do in my head, not too well, is addressing the dean's problem. If you sort of take out these transient or you know, disappearing costs, or you know, one-time investments in new programs, you know, how how's the line look then? You know, if you remove the, these. Well, I haven't done that analysis, but I think it would the line would look better. Yeah. Um. Charlie, putting it differently, how much money are you? About half a million, maybe a little more. Half a million. You know, and I, I uh, appreciate the uh, the view that Arlington has on on the Minuteman budget. I think I've uh, you know tried to accommodate some of these concerns over the years. Uh, the big issue that I guess I maybe need to remind everyone of that the school committee and our member communities made it very clear that they want to minimize the number of out-of-district students that Minuteman accommodates. Now, I'm not going to comment personally on whether I agree with that or not, but as the superintendent, I'm required to implement their decisions, and that's what's happening right now. Okay, are there any other questions for the superintendent at this stage? Okay, Ed, do you want to proceed through the budget function? Uh, the last item on here is a list of capital repair projects for next year. That we're anticipating some repairs to our roads and parking lots, which may be a little higher after the winter we've had. Um, rehab of some safety and life safety issues with the alarm and some <laughs> doors associated with emergency doors. Uh, we have a two-year plan to replace our emergency generators, and then we have some flooring that it needs to be replaced. Uh, some transportation vehicles we're purchasing used. The, um, the trailer and John Deere tractor will be used by the horticulture equipment uh, program as well as the uh, maintenance. And then we're continuing to fund the stabilization fund that was established a few years ago uh, out of this budget at, at $100,000. So our capital repairs, um, it's down from last year, but it's still a significant amount of money. And um, our experience with some of these repairs is that when we open up the building, the building's not what is on the plans, and it ends up costing more. So we're being pretty conservative about what we expect to get done with this amount of money um, at, uh, for next year. Any other questions? Do you want me to talk about the uh, some of the other issues? Yep, might as well. Thanks, Sam. Oh, Charles. Coming back to this $500,000 reduction, how, how is that going to win its way into reducing Arlington expenditures? <coughs> Our overall budget will be, you know, reflective of those reduced expenditures, and so you would share it in that way. Will our proportionate share of the assessment go up? As the school goes down, as the school size goes down, that'll depend entirely on the overall enrollment from the other member communities. Almost entirely. Okay. <coughs> we, at best, we would see two hundred thousand dollar, two hundred thousand dollar reduction to the five hundred thousand. If that was a That's steady about state right. number. Those are program costs. Uh, you know, we didn't talk about the associated benefits, cost savings. You know, we haven't done a full analysis of what a smaller school. We've done an analysis of what a smaller school would look like. Yeah, that's right. We did that. We would be looking at a an overall staffing reduction of, of 21 percent, um, and that covers administrative all areas of the building go from currently 155 staff to 23. So my, you asked what would be the program cost savings well, I mean, of closing I mean, those I mean, programs. I mean, not just the, everything that goes along with it. I'm just trying to understand 
when when we make these adjustments, what's the total impact on the budget going to be? Well, you did you did we get specific about that? We were, we looked at overall staffing reductions and estimated what it would cost. Yeah, we saw that um, it was uh, probably about a one percent growth from where we are now, three years out. But we haven't looked at it in terms of how it would impact assessments. Although we did do the uh, the, the uh, capital planning model, we could probably uh, calculate it based on the analysis we've done. So we'd have to do some more work on that, Charlie, to figure out just exactly where Arlington would be three yeah, years I, from it now. It seems to me that if you're contemplating a new building project of some sort, that and you want people to be supportive of some some plan or another. <coughs> It would be advantageous to let the member towns know what the future looks like in terms of the results of your rejiggering the programs and the staffing. We, and we've we've taken a stab at that in this document, which we I think we provided a link to that as well. We did. We, and we have some copies of that that we can go over. We, it's a first draft, so any input that you would have, we'd be you know appreciated in getting at those numbers. Is that included in our, was it included? It's in not in here, no, it's a separate document. It came in the email. Okay. And we have 10 or so copies if you'd like. Okay. Spend some time on. We're hoping, I, I should, we're hoping to have a more, um, a meeting that Miniman would have in uh, Arlington, you know, through our school committee member and inviting the FinCom and the selectmen and, and any of the public who are interested in looking at this more closely we'd like to have an initial meeting like that before the first of may so and we're doing this in a number of towns already so we can spend some focused time on this um, have uh, the school building committee representatives here as well and and talk about those issues in more detail um, and i wrote down the dates that you're not meeting so we might try to have it one of those days <laughs> Okay, so can I, so going back to talking about earlier, maybe up more of a finer point on it, what was the what was the thinking behind closing these two programs at the same time you were moving down the path of downsizing the school with the rebuild or even even the complaint? I'm assuming you're gonna build the school next to the existing one. The new school will be much smaller than the existing one. Right, but so what was the thought of <coughs> When I talk about the cost, <coughs> continuing to ask it, I think you and I are on the same page. The cost of closing the program, closing two programs adds a cost. Downsizing the school adds a cost. I mean, I put them as one number together, but they're two components of the same number. Yeah. And so I understand you phase out a program that takes three years. Right. But we could also find ourselves, um, probably going to find ourselves at, at a 625 person school in that building not a new building in that same building there could be for a year or two perhaps is that what you think it's going to be you don't think yeah. it's longer than that no it'll be three years to build the building won't it i think you, your document said 32 months yes so how long do you think it's going to take to get down to 625 a couple of years but we're also it takes three years to start a new program too so we wouldn't be starting any new programs till FY17, and then it would be only an exploratory basis. So then in FY8, we, had to, we did it strategically to look at when programs are closed and new programs are being offered and programs are being combined, what's the facility need to accommodate? Or what are the programs need to accommodate? Wherever we are, if we're in a, still at the, in the current building, um, you know, we've looked at those costs if we're still in the current building, what it would cost to accommodate those new programs. But the new programs were driven not by the building project. The new programs were really driven by workforce development data, workforce demand data, and other issues related to the development of an educational program plan. And what were the new programs again? Um, digital, um, multimedia engineering, and advanced manufacturing. And we have, I can talk about the ed program plan now. If Wait, you, would you start an advanced manufacturing program in the, new in the current building? We would, we could, we could accommodate 
Not, not, a, not an effective one, no. We could accommodate exploratory and some basic skills. We have, Minuteman, I guess, opened up with a machine shop in it. For some reason, it closed. And some of the equipment is still there. Some of the equipment that you can use to train kids on is not multi-million dollar machines anymore. It's much more um, lean um, and less expensive to start a program than it was 20 years ago. <coughs> So the, <clears throat> the educational program plan on page nine, just I'll, I'll kind of go through this at a high level, if that's okay, sure. but, um, quickly. <clears throat> the plan supports a career academy model, um, plus some share, a shared house. This academy model was, was selected by staff and <clears throat> approved conceptually by the school committee because it allows greater integration of curriculum, flexibility, and project-based learning, which is sort of a core methodology of Minuteman, and flexibility in scheduling and teacher planning time. <clears throat> We're estimating a four-year transition model to Dean's question there. And then you can see in slide nine a more detailed look at each academy, the programs within it, and the shared house um, accommodations. And this educational program plan was submitted to the Department of Ed <clears throat> a year ago, October, and, and revised after the vote of the school committee and submitted again in November. And actually, Monday, March 9th, um, they're coming to Minuteman to review the educational program plan because it does have to be approved by the department. And, and the educational uh, program plan continues on the page 19, page 10, slide 19 and 20, with a review of the, so some pictures. Uh, multimedia engineering is really an interesting program. It's really state-of-the-art. It has to do with what is deemed the creative industries in <coughs> Massachusetts. Advertising, architecture, visual arts, film, media, music production. <coughs> in some areas of the country, they're calling it entertainment engineering. But we felt that that was not an appropriate name for our district. <laughs> so <coughs> it really is reflective of multimedia and engineering. Um, on slide 21, um, I think it was John asked a question about why we think we're going to see an increase in our member district communities, and, and that's just sort of an outline of what I said earlier. Uh, and we're starting to see some of that impact already. We're very uh, optimistic about our, uh, our applications for this year for next fall. <coughs> Are you getting more applications from Boston because of the disaster they call, uh, was it Madison High? Madison Park. Park. Uh, we're not seeing any increase, no, and that's mainly because of the disaster called the Salt and Labyrinth, uh, which was perpetuated on those families by the five communities that were sending a lot of students to Minuteman, and they successfully found a way to block access for young people from urban environments to come to our community. There was an um, article in Boston Magazine last week about it, written by an investigative reporter, which I delivered personally to the Department of Ed, State Board of Ed, last Tuesday, prior to my testimony around the regulations, which were voted last Tuesday, which is are very interesting. John? Uh, <coughs> it, it used to be the case, I think maybe it was maybe Needham, um, member town, did not allow you to come in and make presentations. Yeah. Is that still the case? No. No, it's, um, <coughs> it's been very re uh, refreshing to see the, the access that our communities have given us. <coughs> I would say the only community that it's been a challenge with has been Weston. Um, they haven't followed through on some of their promises to us, but um, that's the way it's been. All the other communities, we have pretty good access. Could we'll continue. I, I, I don't see it here, but I, I wonder if it would be possible for you to uh, give us a chart uh, that might show <coughs> the uh, number of students that each town 
has in the in the in your system over say the past seven or ten years, something like that. Would that be possible? Yeah, there is a page in the budget book that has that exact chart in it. I believe it's page um <coughs> we have some of these actually <coughs> they've been passed. Excuse me. <coughs> I didn't get sick till I started going back to the gym. What's that tell you about exercise? <laughs> <laughs> you talk. Page 12 of the budget book gives a 15-year uh, historical enrollment uh, by member town. Okay. And then it gives a total by non-member town. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> so the building project, if I can just give you a quick update, and like I said, I want to give you a much more <coughs> in-depth um, time, and I'm going to let Kevin continue this while I get a drink of water. So as you know, our current Sorry. facility is uh, about 305,000 <coughs> uh, square feet. We've been in the MSBA pipeline now since 2009. Uh, it, 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 Sorry. Yes. Take, take you back to this. Oh, sure. You yeah. know, the, what would be awfully nice is a chart rather than this, you know, the table. It's kind of hard to to judge the table, if, if that's possible. Do you have a chart? Is there a chart? Yeah, we can provide, we can provide a chart. Could, could, you, could you just maybe and somehow send it? You want to send it to me or anyone? Well, I just want you to email it to me, and I'll okay, email great. it to everybody. That's, that would so be great. 15 year you very, thank you very much. Yes. So anyway, getting back to uh, slide 23 on page 12, um, we've been in, uh, we were approved to participate in the MSBA feasibility study uh, uh, back in 2009, um, we've been the longest feasibility study in the MSBA uh, program. Um, many of those that, that we started with are, are already completed their projects. Um, in 2014, uh, MSBA also granted us an extension to uh, June of 2016 uh, in order to work through uh, some of the issues that we're dealing with regarding um, the uh, regional agreement, as well as to allow uh, the school committee to work through the uh, educational program plan that we just talked about, as well as uh, continuing along on our preliminary construction costs. Uh, right now, we're grandfathered at the 40% uh, reimbursement. Uh, the current base rate is 31% uh, on MSBA uh, projects. We have, uh, we put together uh, preliminary cost estimates on uh, five different options. The first three options uh, would be um, participating under the MSBA program. There's the renovation of 176 million, the renovation addition of 175.3 million, and the new school with uh, demolition at 144.9 million. As you can see, the district share is listed uh, to the right of that, of those um, those total costs, and as you can see for the duration, uh, the, the renovation and the uh, renovation addition it will be much longer in terms of uh, project completion than would be a new school with demolition. Uh, the school building committee uh, uh, set up a, a subcommittee uh, called the non-MSBA um, uh, building uh, plan where we looked at what it would cost to repair <coughs> with no MSBA um, participation with one uh, option looking at uh, implementing uh, the partial ed plan and the other option being the no educational plan and as you can see that the district uh, would we're estimating uh, including all soft costs anywhere from 198 million to 100 million over a 10-year duration and a lot of what's driving those costs is that uh, that t that duration and those escalator costs as well as the inability to be able to work on this on a continuous basis. We have to work on it over summer and vacation breaks. And that would make for a very challenging environment um, uh, as far as uh, student learning in the building, trying to provide for swing space and those types of accommodations. So we provided, a, a, on page 26, we provided an estimate on what, what, what's the cost under the three options under the MSBA plan. and. Um, the detail of those costs is listed in the, um, the project options uh, analysis that was sent to you over the weekend. But uh, when we look at to Arling projecting Arlington's total cost, inclu uh, including assessments and debt service, 
under the under the option one and the option two, it's roughly about six point one million, with a uh, what we're estimating is a as a median uh, the tax impact on a medium home to be about uh, sixty three dollars and eighty four cents a year under option one and sixty three dollars and forty one cents a year under option two. If we look at the new school with the demolition of the existing building, total project uh, cost, I'm sorry, the, the net project cost that the districts would have to pay would be $86.9 million, and it would be roughly <coughs> $5.9 million uh, total assessment to Arlington, and the median home tax impact would be about $52.38 a year. Any questions on that? Cool. So, so even the least expensive, that's the annual debt service cost? No, that would no, be what we're projecting as total assessment. <coughs> the annual debt service oh. is... Uh, Including opera operating <coughs> and... Yes. Yes. The total annual debt service for the entire district would be 2.6 million and Arlington's annual no nope, that's that's not that'd be more than no, that. no it's um it's it's um the total for the district is uh for the new construction would be about four four point five million of which Arlington would have about uh million four seventy nine would be the uh would be the debt service. Repeat that number again, a million. Sure. Um, we're projecting that under the new construction process, yeah. uh, of the 5,884, which is the total assessment we're projecting for the town, that of that 1,479,000 would be associated with the, uh, the debt service for the, for the project. And uh, over how many? 30 years. 30 years? Yes. Now, does this include any funds coming in from the non-member towns? Has that been part of the calculation? Yes. Um, it assumes, uh, it, it looks out four years because the debt service will kick in uh, in, uh, the permanent financing will kick in around fiscal 20. So based upon our recruitment and retention strategy, we're looking at um, enrollment growth at around the seven to eight percent, as the superintendent mentioned earlier, which would give us an enrollment, uh, in district enrollment of about 524 students, and the remaining 104 slots would be um, out of district uh, students. And we factored in those uh, out of district tuition costs based on a four year projection we did, and we've included that in, in the revenue plan. Gene? So, on this option three, just so I understand. The five point eight million is our four million dollar annual assessment plus a debt service assessment. Is that what we're saying? Yes. Or, okay, and then it's gonna sound like a sarcastic comment, but there's no other way to say it. This just assumes so far no savings for going into a smaller building with fewer kids. Right. Right. That's well, right. That's, I think Charlie alluded to it. I mean that's kind of right. That, right. that analysis needs to happen. We're getting to the point where it has to happen, right? Because yeah. it's $1.4 million of debt service is a really, really big number. But you feel like you can get your arms around it better if you thought that you were going to pay, you were going to have a reduction of $500,000 a year in the operating cost versus um, nothing. And then you're, at least your net cost to the community is, net cost to the community is 900000 not $1.4 million. Right. We're, at, we're still on the same However, when we look at the total budget, we're projecting a total budget under that model of about 22.5 million. So if you take out 4.4 million of it that's related to debt service, that's getting us to a, uh, that would be a net operating budget of about $18 million. So it does reflect some of those reductions some that we're it. talking some about. Of them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And this is, this is a forward looking out to four years. So, and there's some escalators in there as well relative to inflation and things of that nature. Okay. Okay, are there other questions? Charlie? Does this include the, uh, the 
capital allocation formula that, that's in the new agreement or the current capital allocation formula? Both. We've done one the number. Oh, that, excuse me. Which, that which one number? Oh, that's that's under the revised. Well. I'm sorry. I, I thought you were talking about this program. Did you pay this? The um, the slide includes under the revised agreement. So it'll be worse under the current. Yes. But the uh, the projected cost options booklet does a comparison between the revised as well as the current on all three projects. Four years. Uh, so as I mentioned on slide 27, we're hoping to meet with some uh, all our communities. In May 2015, the school committee, this May, will vote on one of these options to move forward to the MSBA. The MSBA will let us know what they approve in the July time frame. And then uh, we go through the process of communicating what we're trying to do to uh, all of our member communities. Any vote on a project would if we go the traditional route, uh, the vote would come before town meetings in spring of 2016, a year from now. What, 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 did, what did you mean? Why did you qualify that by saying the traditional route? What, what do you well, mean? Well, the traditional that? route is that um, under section uh, chapter 7116D that we have unanimous approval by all 16 communities. And then how many of our other debt exclusion votes would be required in, in the 16 communities? So assuming that they're all going to make us go through a debt exclusion, we need to have 32 unanimous votes. That's the traditional way. The non-traditional way is what's been done in a couple of schools over the last couple of years is a district-wide ballot under Chapter 7114D where the voters, um, Miniman would have to pay for a, a ballot to be held in all 16 communities on the same day during the same time, and then the aggregate vote is counted, and, and if it's over 50%, then the project is deemed approved. Irregardless of any debt exclusion, passing or failing? <clears throat> That's a question that I don't have the answer to. We've asked for, we've gotten some, we've gotten varying answers on that, and um, the, the uh, attorneys that we use during the regional agreement process at Lennox is, trying to give us a definitive answer because actually another superintendent asked me the same thing was putting together a district-wide ballot for, for the next fall. Um, any other questions about that? <clears throat> so uh, there's just one slide on it and last Tuesday the State Board of Ed approved changes in the Chapter 74 regulations. Um, some of them, um, on slide 29, you see allow vocational schools to add a capital construction renovation increment. It really should be stated that the Department of Ed will determine and will add a, ca a capital construction <coughs> renovation increment to the base tuition for receiving school districts that are part of an MSBA project. So this was something that we've tried to address through the regional agreement and intermunicipal agreements not ever expecting that it would be put into regulation, but it is now regulation um, that any non-member community who's sending us students will pay um, a capital fee. If that sending community has five or more Chapter 74 programs, they'll pay 75% of the fee, but all other communities would pay 100% of the fee. In the way that we've been able to um, translate how they would calculate the fee. It would be simply an average that all of our member districts are paying divided by the number of students. So we've estimated it would be about $4,000 per pupil would be added on to the non-resident tuition to offset our uh, capital costs. Um, in addition, um, they've eliminated something called provisional approval, which was good. It upholds the, the standards that we have in Career Tech Ed. Um, it requires the release of seventh and eighth grade student names for those schools that um, were withholding those names from the standpoint of sending information to the families. It's now going to be required that uh, they provide them. They did make some changes in exploratory, but they uh, delayed the <coughs> implementation of those ninth grade exploratory regulations for one year. 
which was um, <coughs> which was helpful. Is this <coughs> for member and non-member <coughs> teams? The exploratory piece? No, the uh, release of 7th and 8th grade names. Yes. So if you wanted all the 7th and 8th grade names for the city of Waltham, mm -hmm. they'd have to give them to you. Well, I'm, that's how I'm interpreting it. I'm glad your Waltham would not interpret it that way. <laughs> <laughs> but for instance, like Watertown, that doesn't have five or more vocational technical programs. It has 70 kids are going to be in right now. Yeah. We would expect the commission to ask them as well. <coughs> okay, other questions for the superintendent? I guess just an observation from me as an individual member, but these total cost projects seem awfully high. Uh, you know, we were, you were playing around with numbers three, four years ago with around 60 million, and, uh, but, you know, getting up to 175, 150, 175 million, and, uh, and then we figure out our share for 140 kids starts to look awfully expensive, but just an initial thought. So, anybody else? Start with, are we going to discuss the regional agreement? It's on the slide. Two. Next slide. Oh, sorry. The regional agreement. Ten towns have approved it. Uh, the six who have not approved it have it on their warrants. Um, I'm pretty confident that four of the six will approve it. Um, I'm less than confident that Lincoln and Wayland will approve it. Um, Intermunicipal agreements have been um, under negotiations <coughs> with, I would say, four of the six communities um, that have indicated a preliminary interest in um, over the coming two weeks. I think I'll have a much better sense of where we stand with Wayland and Lincoln. I actually have having the school committee have a special school committee this coming, or the 12th of, of March to hear an executive session um, some components of an intermissible agreement with one of those communities um, and we'll see what the school committee wants to do. Charlie? Is, this, uh, is there municipal agreement required now that you have the new state law on the capital assessment? Well, when we originally uh, envisioned the intermunicipal agreement, it was to address that one issue. I think the, the one issue that's now taken its place is access to a smaller school. The capital piece is sort of moot now that this is passed. Yeah, now it's just an agreement that they can send their kids there. They can send their kids there. Because we've changed the, uh, we haven't implemented it, but the, we've changed the uh, admissions policy so that we'll be transitioning to a point in time where we will not accept applications from out-of-district students. I'll refrain from giving you my personal opinion on that decision. However, it was, it was done. In order to move forward with the size school that we could probably get. Okay, are there any other questions for the superintendent? <coughs> okay, you have, um, I think in one of the emails has the break, more breakdown on the uh, uh, capital cost from the new project. Right? Um, so if anybody has any questions, I don't see any, hope you don't have a problem with just emailing them to you or Kevin and. Oh, email me, yeah, that's fine. Absolutely, Kevin. <laughs> okay, that sounds no good. Any additional thoughts, questions? <coughs> Paul? I, just in general, on this year's budget, if the uh, governor and the legislature end up cutting local aid some. Paul, could you speak up? Just, if, if the legislature and the governor <coughs> end up cutting local aid a little, how will you deal with that? 
Well, it depends what a little is. Um, I think we're, we're in pretty good shape this year. We did not um, plan on the 90% reimbursement rate in transportation that was promised us. We planned on what we've been averaging the last few years, and so we're okay there because the 9C cuts rolled those back. Um, we're, we're running the budget pretty lean this year, um, although our snow removal line item is going to be, as everyone's is, uh, difficult. So a small drop in local aid will not impact us very much. We, it, we'd be able to accommodate that within our budget. We wouldn't be needing come back to the towns for any additional funds. There may be a combination of uh, our health insurance uh, renewal rates that are projecting to be lower than what we anticipated, so we may be able to pick up some savings there, maybe commit more E&D or, or some other revenue source. Thank you. <coughs> now, the assessment that you're requesting at this time is 4 million from Arlington, is 4,010463. We expect the governor's numbers out on Wednesday, and to the extent that that changes the uh, foundation enrollment numbers, we'll be getting those numbers out right away. Dean? I, I guess my, my last question I'll ask, because it's where we'll head to immediately we'll start debating, it'll be no surprise to either of you, is um, I think our position as a committee has been that we are using, we're going to use this school to continue to use the school we built as our battle line um, that we're not going to bend on in order to get the regional agreement changed in different things like that. Um, so with all of this sort of moving forward, I mean, what's your confidence level in the regional agreement actually getting changed at this point? I'm accused often of being overly optimistic about things. Um, I'd say of getting all 16 towns to approve it in this town meeting season <coughs> is about a 50-50 shot. Okay. Where are we going to be at the end of this town meeting season? 13? That's 14? Realistically. 14. Okay, are there any other questions? Okay, Ed, Kevin, thank you very much for coming. We appreciate your time. We know you've going to a lot of town halls these days. And the police department. Okay, thank you. Hope you feel better. Thanks. <coughs> Thanks for all your support. I really appreciate it. You ask good questions, and <coughs> I hope you know I'm kind of on your side, too. <laughs> okay, appreciate it. Okay, so we've got the total assessment request is four million ten thousand four sixty-three. Uh, what are the thoughts of the uh, committee? Four million zero one zero four million zero one zero four six three, and that's what the manager has in his. Uh, his projection. Now, there could be a modification with the governor's budget on Wednesday, um, but we could vote it now and then we could modify it later if we need to. Clint? Um, so I know we have a relatively new member to the regional food committee, but I'd be interested in hearing from her the thinking behind this enrollment plan. To Dean's point, it, it does a lot of pain in the short term. I guess it's, it's affected by the building plans, but it, it, it would be nice to hear what their thoughts are behind this shift and, and why they're doing it, and if they realize the pain it's going to cause Arlington in the short term. Um, I, I, she was supposed to be here today. I, I, I don't know why she isn't. Um, um, so I could ha I could try to have her come, uh, and, and again, she's very new, so. Uh, it's going to be hard to wrap up. I, th I think uh, a lot of it's driven by the capital because uh, so many towns, probably us included, 
saw, you know, 400 students, uh, and yet we're building a school for 800, and we're going to pay 100 percent. Uh, the 16 towns are going to pay 100 percent of the uh, the costs when we're only using 50 percent of the building. So I think the the capital is driving it to reduce it down so a larger percentage of it is being used by the uh, uh, by the member towns. Yeah, but, it, but again, now with, the, with the new regulations, they can pass on those costs to the non-member districts and get more economies of scale from our larger building. Yeah. You know, it could be, of course, regulations can change. We saw that with the tuition, you know, going up and then about now it's being forced on down. So, you know, it could go both ways, but I think that's been the uh, that's been the big thing. Well, Dan, Dan, Lynn, I mean, part of what I was trying to get at was, and I sort of asked at the very end, and I said, well, what do we have a school built? Oh, well, I've built three, four years, right? Okay. Well, we're not going to we're not moving until the regional agreement gets changed, where you're going to have a change by the end of the year. No, we're going to 14, and then we're going to roll to next year, and maybe at the end of. 16 we could have them but oh by the way arlington's vote falls off the cliff before then so now we're not, we're now the outlier in all of that because we put a grandfathering provision on ours that sunset the end of it so we've got to re-vote it at town meeting so we're not going to vote to move into the schools any earlier in the fall of what 16 or 17. that would take three years to build it for 2020 i mean fairly quickly and that's where i was kind of just a little caught off guard that they're moving to downsize the school now. Because they're still in the bigger building. So they seem to be moving to downsize and then they're gonna be in that same building with 625 kids for multiple years. I, I, you know, I, I didn't quite understand that the more I thought about it because it still has the 745 students there. And even though they were eliminating two now, well, they fully eliminated drafting. They're in the process of eliminating two more, but they're also creating two more. So, um, you know, I don't see that happening yet. Paul, did you? Uh, look, just one more point on your scenario. The MSBA agreement on 40% goes away yeah. at the I end know. of next year. Like 2016, so it all goes away. Okay, well, that, that's um, on the building <coughs> part of it. Right now, the only thing before us at this town meeting is, of course, the budget. I'm sorry, Charlie? I said I moved the budget to be uh, recommended. Second. Okay, the budget for 4,010,463 has been moved and seconded. Uh, any discussion? I just have to say there's a drop of 9%, 9% of the overall population that the budget's even going up, uh, it, that going up something. And I understand what he's saying, that it's, it's a step reduction, because you need to lose 30 students in one, or 20 students in one class to get there. I, I, I just I just got a tough time with this thing. I just, I don't get it, I don't have an explanation for it, but I'm just saying, it's, it's pretty hard to swallow. Trevor? Uh, you know, I, I uh, share a lot of concerns about this proposed budget. The fact of the matter is, we don't have any control over the damn thing. The only the only control we have is is whether or not we support the building of a new school with a uh, with, um, give it with the, the unanimous requirement for uh, debt for a uh, for bonding. Okay, I, I understand that. So I'm with a, you. we have a certain couple a certain few steps of leverage that we can follow, and and uh, if the new agreement is you know, one of the options we might have is to actually get out of this. Uh, I just have to express my, uh, you know, my dismay it. at it. In, in, in the sense that, you know, I have to be vocal about it, otherwise budget. nobody ever knows. Yeah. Okay, John and then Len. So, I, I, I have to agree with you, okay? And my, my agreement is based on many years on this committee and maybe only one or two years have I seen something positive relative to this budget. Every year it seems to get worse and worse. I mean, I, I'm just projecting here the 
the member towns, the other member towns, their, their uh, enrollment goes down by more than 1% approximately every year. Okay? So the only thing that I can project forward with is more and more pain for Arlington. I mean, Alan's statement about an enormously expensive school is terrifying. Well, the given, numbers... Given, given our, given yeah, the our, our problems in this town and the, and our, the possibility of, of building new high schools. The numbers <coughs> that they just presented us, so five, five million eighty five represents, ne using next year's budget numbers, that's 4% of our total budget or 0.4% of the population. Yeah. So, and I'm just I mean, not, I, I'm just, Charlie is right, we have yeah. to vote it. I'm not voting it. I'm voting negative. I'm tired, I'm, I'm so sick and tired of watching this process over many, many years that I'm simply not voting it. It never seems to get better. Every year, something happens and it looks worse. And it's either this or that or that. Nobody seems to solve this problem. So I'm going to vote no. Just so long as enough people vote yes, because otherwise <laughs> you've got to come up with four million dollars <laughs> when they uh, send the treasurer the the, the uh, check. Other discussion. Okay, motion's been made and seconded for four million zero one zero four six three. All those in favor, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13. Opposed? One, two, three, four. Okay, the motion passes 13 to four. Um, okay, now I think, you know, people take a look at those bu uh, building uh, studies. The, the, the one thing, if you look at it, that, that struck me when I was looking at it today was well, you've seen the enrollment in this report that was given to us, and it's gone steadily down, a little up and down, but basically down. And then in the building plans, it's going steadily up. You know, and I think the superintendent, this superintendent has been trying his best over the last five or six years to build the enrollment. He, he is, uh, not made a lot of friends and superintendents and fellow other school districts and other vocational districts because he's gone after as many students as he can and the number just stays level or, you know, it's just, uh, it's not going up. I share your frustration. I'm just not sure what the answer is. Okay. Um, now, on the water bodies, I sent you the special legislation there. So the special legislation which created this fund, I, I think, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, maybe Peter, you know, before we created this fund back in 2008, I think we had a Warren article, and then we just used the Warren article to appropriate money and carry it over. And then the controller with the pro prodding of the Department of Revenue uh, said you can't do that. You know, you, you, you've got to have a fund. So we created the special legislation to create the fund. So the fu so any funds that weren't used could carry over, combine with the new one, and you've seen their plan before. So that's the reason for appropriating money into the Warren Water Bodies Fund. Um, I did have a little bit of a conversation with somebody from, P from uh, DPW on the, the pond in uh, McLennan Park. And uh, the, the observation was there is no pond in McLennan Park. It's, it's a brook with a slight bulge, um, is how it was described to me. Now, I haven't really gone up there much to take a look at it, and I'm sure not gonna do it now, because it's under probably five feet of snow. But, um, you know, it, 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 it comes in one side. But it is part of the water bodies because water bodies includes brooks, like Mill Brook and, and all those. So um, I don't know what's going to happen with that. The Conservation Commission supposedly is studying all the different brooks. 
Um, nobody raised any questions to Gloria to ask them. So, um, when? So in reviewing the legislation though, it, it does say it's supposed to be, spending is supposed to be under the direction of the town manager. Right. So I would be a little bit more comfortable if the budget was actually proposed by the town manager and not this sort of ad hoc committee made up of 20, 20, Vision 2020 people from Spy Pond, Vision 2020 from the other, uh, <coughs> uh, the Reservoir Committee, and a, a public a public works department employee. So it's sort of this hodgepodge committee that's not mentioned at all in the legislation. So I'm sure I'm sure Adam would just say yes, I agree with the recommendation. But it, I think I think it'd be useful and, and probably legally required to ask him, is this your proposed budget under this legislation? We're, you know, we're going to have him in once or twice in March. Uh, we could ask him that. My guess is that, uh, you know, he would support the program in, in going forth. I don't know whether he'd say it's a high priority in his part or a medium or a low priority. We have to hear him say that. Um, Peter? Teresa has been did this. <coughs> the Benedictus, the person from DPW is here. Is the assistant uh, director. director of DBW, and she's the one that controls the money. Uh, she works, of course, for the town manager by direction. Uh, the the committee the committee people are all interested, and they weigh in with suggestions and so forth, which is the way government is supposed to work. Anybody else? We can vote it as is. Um, we can wait for the manager. You know, what, what's what's the pleasure of the committee? I recommend we vote it as is. Okay. Okay. So a motion's been made for forty thousand, Peter. Yes. Okay. Um, motion's been made and seconded for forty thousand dollars. Any further discussion? Denise, uh, or sorry, Christine. Uh, I, I'm going to vote against it. Uh, I, I, don't, I won't repeat my my reasoning, but I, I do feel like we're going to be in the same situation year after year after year, where we don't know what's happening with the other water bodies, and no one is taking us taking responsibility to find out. And I feel like there's there's some price tag that we're going to be paying in the future for that. So for that reason to approve this budget to, to, to appropriate yet again $40,000 uh, for Spy Pond um, without even committing to a professional survey of the other water bodies, I think is foolhardy. Um, I mean, they do spend money on Hills Hill and the reservoir also, but you're right, the giant share a spy pond. Okay, John? Does the Water Bodies Committee understand Christine's point? Oh, you know, yes. Not a committee. And is there any plan to survey, uh, for example, McClellan Pond or Brook or however you want to call it? <laughs> yes, the, uh, <coughs> the head of the Conservation Commission, who was here the other night, said that they are, inv they are investigating and they're probably going to hire a consultant to do up do it up correct? I mean I, I've seen the Pragmites up there and there. there there's a huge Are they Pragmites or are they uh, um, no, the other, other, are other kinds of no, water Pragmites Pragmites are infringing upon the pond, pond and they're bigger than they, they used to be. So you know I, I agree with Christine, I think someone should go and look at that to see what might be done there. Because there are ways of mitigating the Pragmite problem. Now we could require in the vote or in the comment, it's probably stronger if it's in the vote, um, that um, the, uh, the manager report back to the finance committee and to town meeting 
uh, recommendations on the other water bodies besides Hills Hill, the reservoir, and Spy Pond, which would include the brook or pond, whichever you want to call it, up at McClendon Park, and obviously Millbrook, uh, um, I guess would be the others. Because I think Alwife and the Mystic Lakes and uh, River under uh, the state, state jurisdiction, we could do something like that. Alan? I think if, if, if my notes are right, I believe they committed to you know, the $15,000 for the consultant. I believe they stated clearly that it was to be all of the water bodies, not just the spy pond, you know, as per the set of assessment with you know, recommendations of what to do. But it wasn't just limited to spy pond, those over the reservoir, it was all the water bodies, including Mill Brook and McCrone. That's right. That, that's what I remember. I don't think they committed to that. I, I, my recollection is that um, it was sort of if, if there's money that they may do that. I, I didn't hear a, a, a okay. promise that they're going to take 15 out of the 40 and spend it for a survey. Okay, so I'm not sure exactly how to word it, but if we could say that the $15,000 is for a survey, which would include all the water bodies, that's part of the vote. Not sure exactly how to express that. That'd be reasonable. Okay, we could more, be more specific that way, Ken. You know, you know even though you somehow mandated they have this survey, there's <coughs> no guarantee they're going to come back to us with the information. I mean, it'd be nice to know if they're going to have that we get the information. So I'd like, like what you had suggested just a little while ago, is to have a little thing about the manager reporting back to us. This way, they'd be forced to give us a report as to what what happened, what the report was, but. Having a survey is no obligation to get back to us and say, this is what we found, this is what we want to do. There's no obligation there. Where with your notation with the town manager, now there is an obligation to get back to us. Okay, do you want to add that as a addition to the regular vote? Yes. Okay, so you want to add that the manager, uh, town manager shall report uh, on a study I could fine tune this of all town water bodies um, for the next annual town meeting. Yes. Is that okay? So that is, is all town water bodies? I mean, does that mean puddles? I mean, yeah. I, is there? Is there? I mean, you know, do we need to? Do we need to spell out what we're talking about? I wouldn't recommend you spell it out. There, there was a list of them on the right. handout that we got. Right. So oh. Do you uh, <coughs> I mean, in the legislation, it says towns, bodies, and water. Right, but what they said, they listed them all. At the bottom of the preamble, Spy Pond, the Reservoir, Mystic Lakes, Mystic River, Hills Pond, Mill Brook, Reach Brook, and Life Brook. Yeah, we'll just list them out. And Chris, Christine's body of water is, is the brook. Which reaches the Reach Brook. That's okay. That's, what is that? That's Reed Brook. What? What is that called? That Brook? Reed. Reed. Reed, 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 Reed. Reed. Okay. Okay, and that was an asterisk to. The preamble of the water. Arlington's water bodies are. Okay, that was to the, uh, the preamble on this. Right. Okay. Tell you what. Why don't I work on this, um, on just some wording, and I'll email it out to everybody, and then everybody can know exactly what they're voting on. So, um, why don't I give that a shot um, over the next day or two, and I'll email it out to everybody, and we can and we have something solid to vote on. Okay, so why don't we'll just lay it on the table, and uh, I'll get back to you with something in the next couple of days. Okay, uh, budgets. Yes, Ken? Please budget. Okay.
certainly do plenty, so the place now, but if you, you want to do more is tonight. Mary Margaret, okay? Okay, sure. Okay, so we'll finish the uh, police and then we'll go to what? Okay. Is there a budget? Well, just a couple of the uh, larger, you know, some of the big changes that, um, well, so now we have a $15,000 change for the Minuteman bikeway uh, patrol. I guess there have been some complaints to the board of selectmen, town manager, and the police and so forth. Certain periods of time crimes are being committed on the uh, bikeway. So okay, I'm sorry. Uh, this is on page 120. 120. One. Yeah. One. Okay, and, and what are you referring to? I'm telling the uh, first major change in the $15,000 is something new for the Minuteman Bikeway uh, Patrol. This is something new. Uh, I stated earlier, the, there's some complaints to the town manager, police, board of selectmen, you know, crimes being uh, committed on the uh, bikeway. So what happens is that opportune times, they will have the, uh, the police on the patrol. And <clears throat> this will be up used for, for the overtime by the police officers. So it's a crime uh, prevention. A situation that's been sort of mandated by circumstances. <clears throat> that's why we have that $15,000 change there. And then there's a, um, there's been a change as to reporting emergencies now to the uh, police department. And they now want these people trained as to talk to people, not just say, yeah, we got a cop over there and that's it. They want to talk to them, try to work things out. And of course, we go through the union and this becomes the emergency dispatch stipend. Now, emergency dispatchers get a stipend for all this extra work. This had to be worked out through the union. So it's not something that could have been mandated without union involvement. And there's a 100% change there with the $2,700. Uh, now, Ken, the 15000 for the Minuteman bikeway, is that like overtime? Yes, that is overtime. Okay. Am I right on that, Paul? Right, and that's yeah. why it's listed as a, an item underneath the overtime line. Yep. Okay. So it, it's something new that's sort of been uh, mandated. Um, what, is, can you, yeah. what is this type in for? Yeah. Education. Dispatches. You make an emergency call. Someone's being raw. House being raw. Where at? Bingo. Thank you. Goodbye. Now they want to talk to you, especially well, as an emergency well, type situation. Right. It, the main thing was um, a medical situation. The medical situation. Where they now they, have they now have a, a screen they can call up on their computer that gives them some instructions to go through with the person on the line to say, you know, if the person is in distress with a heart attack, this is what you should do. Or oh, someone's choking, this is what you should do. Don't yes. say whining. Huh? Don't say whining. No, yeah. <laughs> and of course, of course, they had had some uh, uh, training. They'd be, they'd be trained for this. This is extra work and under so union this, contract. So this for the training then, I guess. Well, not just a training, but to respond to it. I mean, they get right. trained. And then they have to respond to it while they're on uh, on duty. So it's, it's an additional assignment, additional work on what they were hired for. So under the union contract, you have to give them a stipend for this. Are they eventually going to try to put that in the, into the salary? Sorry, I didn't ask. I, I didn't ask. I mean, it's still going to cost us, but it is a considered as a uh, as a uh, stipend. Um, The other, the other um, major increase was in the teleprocessing. I guess they've changed their system. There's an online reporting system <coughs> for, for nonviolent crimes. What they're trying to do is, uh, when there's nonviolent crimes, they want to sort of treat them differently. Instead of a police officer responding, respond to every single phone call, they, if there's a nonviolent crime, they can put it into the system. That within the system that will they decide whether or not they need an immediate response from a police officer or whether they have to investigate later on. And of course, with this comes additional costs and with the additional maintenance costs and insurance costs, and therefore that's your major increase for your teleprocessing. Which, which line item is that? That's the uh, line item 5251. Thank you. Okay. And with that, I'll switch over to uh, manpower. Um, <coughs> right now, the slots for chief, 
captain lieutenants are all filled. There are six active sergeants with three vacancies, and we have three vacancies for your uh, patrolmen. We have a total uh, manpower of 66. And what's happening is when there's going to be a, a promotion into sergeant, you'll have a couple of patrolmen making, making sergeant and taking care of those uh, vacancies. He is not going to fill his vacancies basically until after the fiscal year. With the vacancies, this is how he finishes out his budget in hopes to have a um, budget without having to have any increase in uh, money. So this is hopefully will bet him, uh, balance out for the uh, balance of the fiscal uh, year. He also has tied in is probably going to be two retirements. And like sometimes with this fireman we had the last week, uh, these two people are at the 7% bracket, so they're at the highest. And he feels that uh, without filling the uh, vacancies, that um, he'll be able to uh, ride, ride uh, through with the retirements, unless something else happens in the meantime. But he does not see a shortfall uh, for the, for the uh, fiscal year. Okay. And with that. But is that, can you, does that mean that there'll be then fewer patrolmen? In other words, the, the net number will be fewer? No, the uh, net number is not going to change. Hang on a second, I just lost that page. So if he, has, if, he, if he has two retirements, right, he has to hire two people, does he not? Yeah, he'll be hiring. Was okay. All right. You get two going to uh, go make up for the sergeants. Okay. And, and right now we have, um, you know, 46 patrolmen with three vacancies. So there will be some hiring come the next fiscal year. Okay. But they say he hopes to get by and, and keep his budget uh, clean without having to come back. So essentially, uh, I don't know if anybody got the corrected budget, but the corrected budget was sent no, out. They didn't. Huh? Only you and I got this corrected budget. Okay, so we had, oh, I'm sorry, just, oh, okay, just pull on you. Oh, we're the lucky ones, huh? Yeah, so. We got a, a corrected budget that was sent to us, unfortunately. Uh, and um, I'll give you a bottom line figure first. I don't know whether we should get a printout or bring it back on, uh, on Wednesday with the, the new well, record. The, the, one, the correction from that's different from what you got in the budget book is that the chief has gotten a raise as part of the uh, inducement to stay in Arlington and not take um, the MBTA police chief the position that he was offered. So it affects the uh, salaries and wages line and the longevity line and thus uh, affects the bottom line as well. So I'll give you what, what the what the bottom line now is. The correct budget bottom line is seven million five hundred and sixty five thousand nine hundred and sixty three. Where previously it was of course seven million five forty four oh three oh. So it's gone up to 565963. And like Paul said, that was primarily because of the uh, chief. And the, and the only changes are, are a couple of them on the chief's salary? Sorry? The only changes? Right. Are, yeah. Can you give them to us? Yeah. Um, so the chief's salary, like I'm not, uh, yeah. Give, what, what do you want to say? Okay, the, the, uh, ba give the, ba the base is 132601. The uh, firearm is sixteen fifty eight. Defib is thirteen twenty eight. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't think those have, those have changed. Okay, so you got the firearm sixteen fifty eight. Defib thirteen twenty six. Credits thirty three one fifty. Base, 168735. Longevity, 5062. For a total of 173797. That's the change across the line. And then if you go down to the bottom, it now becomes 1 million. 804949 and to the left of that 
that becomes 60466. And to the left of that, that becomes 1,744,483. Thank you. Okay, and on the front page, instead of uh, 5100, it's uh, minus 5100. Sorry, 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 can you? Uh, why don't you give us the bottom lines, and if you could just give us, you know, this page and the these two pages uh, at some point in the next few days. But just give us the bottom line now. What the bottom line now? The bottom <laughs> line is seven million five six five nine six three. Yeah, it, it's, you know, we'd have to go down through all the different elements. Well, as I'm saying is, why don't you just get us 21 copies of this page back, front and back, and, uh, you know, we can vote on the bottom line now. Yeah. No problem. Oh, there was, uh, there's one other change which was in the, in the holiday pay, um, the change from the budget book was $8,890 more. So in place of the 204973, it should be 213863. Um, Sorry, what was that number again? 213863. 5105. Yeah. Sorry, uh, yeah, line 9 5105. Um, I, I believe they just um, did a more careful um, counting of the holiday pay numbers, just like they did in the, in the fire budget. Okay, are there, are there any questions? So he'll get us this page new, uh, but we can still discuss and vote on the bottom line. Yep. There's probably 95% of the changes are all with the, with the chief. Except for that uh, longevity. Yeah, except that for the, was it. Uh, except for that, that, I think it was with the uh, chief. Yep. <laughs> okay, are there any questions? What's the Manning program that they're following now? Wait, wait. Manning program? Yeah. Manning what? How many how many uh, patrol cars out at one time? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. <coughs> I couldn't tell you what the Manning is uh, uh, during the, during the day or even in the evening. I didn't I didn't get into that channel to be honest with you. I think it's been traditionally five sectors, five patrol sectors. Yeah. I can, I can, His manpower hasn't changed. I can tell you what. The, in the daytime, it's four sector cars. However, in that, that's four sectors in the daytime that, that become six sectors on the PM and AM shift. Sectors one through, one through six. But in addition to the daytime, you, you have the four sector cars, you have additional personnel on the street. You, you might have, have a, a radar car, or, and I'm talking from when I, when I used to see it, but you'll have additional officers on the street should there be a problem. But they're running four sectors in the daytime, and. Um, Five to six sectors at night, depending on the man. Okay. And the manning hasn't changed from last year? No. Okay. Same exact man. Sorry. And you'll see in the budget book, it lists, it lists 49 patrolmen. It's actually 47 patrolmen. There are two that will be promoted, but there, it hasn't been known. But the number of captains and lieutenants and sergeants and is still yes, the same. exactly the same. Okay. Additional questions? Okay, so uh, Ken, are you recommending as presented 57,565,963? Yes. Is there a second? Second. Okay, a uh, motion's been made and seconded for that amount. Is there any discussion? Any additional questions? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? Uh, I can mail email out these
cheat sheets with the changes, or I can bring them in on hard copy, which is the, what's the will of the committee. Why don't you, why don't you bring in hard copy? Just okay. yeah. 21 copies, give them to Gloria, and we're good to go. Okay. And then Paul, we email you. Take care of that. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Paul. Did he email you? Okay, so fire and police are done. Uh, Mary Margaret. Okay, so let's. Thank you, Ken. We'll go back to the enterprise funds. The Council on Aging Transportation, which is on page 193. The questions were actually on page 196. I'm sorry, 193? Yeah, but the questions were on from page 196. Okay. So I have some answers. So the fund balance is on June 30th. Hundred thirty-two thousand six hundred forty. I'm sorry, hundred. Hundred thirty-two thousand six hundred forty. Now that's from Ruth. No, that's from Patty, office manager. Oh, but it's from the controller. Oh. Patty is the office manager for okay. I asked the people who manage those departments for the numbers. You want me to go back and ask Ruth for that? Well, I'm assuming it's the same. Uh, it's just you usually have two types of fund balance. One is the one from the controller, and the other is the one from the audit. So I just... Uh, Actually, when you have a chance, just confirm it with Ruth. So we're all we're all on the same page. That's all. All right. And the other question was, what's the plan for when the reserve fund runs out? The plan is to look for additional revenue sources, and they may need to seek general a general fund subsidy. looking up the audited funds? Oh, no. Because <laughs> okay. you had them last year, I mean last week. Okay. So, um, okay, is anybody, now did we? We did not vote. We this. did not vote that. Okay, so those were the two of the questions. Uh, that were asked on Council on Aging Transportation. And I think, Gloria, did we add that to the manager's list? Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, Dean had asked about that other fund and how did it build up, but I couldn't get an answer for that. Which one? The fund balance, the, the 132. Is what we were no, he asked about the 112. Oh, it's a, he was looking at the audit. Right, You're looking right. at the yeah. and you wanted to know how it, how did it build up to so much? Right. I don't have an answer for that. You know what you could do is uh, when you t touch bases with the controller, is ask her to run a revenue and expenditure for that enterprise fund for like the last five years or even ten years, and just you know that should track it. You should be able to see. I think I know, but explain to me why we're interested in the funds. Well, the, uh, if you're losing money every year, you shouldn't have a fund balance. I, I understand, but no. Well, the question right. is, well, so how, how are we making money yeah. more? Maybe right. what we should be looking at is trends rather than, than just the numbers. So the, a plain number to me doesn't mean an awful lot. If I see a trend, right. so uh, maybe it's a, a better thing then. Well, I think the problem is the trend is showing that they're not making money like they used to. Yeah. Right. So the question, what were they doing that they're not doing? Yeah. Or vice versa. Okay. So, but, but it seems to me if we're watching funds, 
then what we really want to look is the, the trend in the funds. Well, if the, if, the, if the fund balance every year is going down, and they're depending on it for a significant amount of their revenues, uh, you know, you just look ahead and it's, yeah. they're in trouble. Right. So, so I, I, I have to say, I haven't paid attention to that in the past, but you know, that would be a, a thing for us to be. Yeah, I mean, just look looking at, at uh, fiscal 13 and fiscal 14, you know, between the two, you're talking uh, $120,000 yeah. drawdown in fund balance. And, uh, you know, so I think that revenue and expenditure would be, would be good. Okay, are there any other questions on the Council on Aging Transportation? We'll get that and uh, if, if you could, uh, if she emails it to you, just email it yep. right around and we'll have that for the manager. Okay. Actually, CC the manager. Okay. Okay. Okay, are there any other questions on the Council on Aging and Transportation? Now, are you recommending as presented? Yes. Okay, so it's, it's on the uh, other page. Expenses of 126, 414. Revenues of 127, 300. Um, is there a second? Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor of, uh, of those numbers for this budget, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, unanimous. Okay, and I'll ask for it in the meantime. Okay. All right, so the next budget was the Arlington uh, Youth <coughs> Counseling Center, which is right after. We did vote on it, but y'all still had some questions. Um, let's see. So the fund balance Patty gave me was um, at the end of you know, June 30th, 2014 was 23474 and 11 cents. All right, you also asked how many clients they see. On average, they see 150 clients a week. And those clients all either reside in Arlington or go to school in Arlington. So 150 a week. Yeah. Okay. On average. Dean, do you have the uh, audit on your little funny machine there? I don't. I'm just cleaning up. Gee, Dean. Get with well, me. she did Florida. The last one I got first, so I keep running Steiger bars above the weather. All right, and um, let's see. So Leonard asked the question about is the case manager still funded by a donation from the High Rock Church? And the way they did the budget, they put the uh, donations for 2016 under gifts and donations, not under the case manager. And Dean asked the question, does the enterprise fund include the accrual cost of OPEP? And this does not, but the audit does, which is what you said Yet last week. Yeah, they balance it by not adding a payroll. Right. Yeah, right. I asked him. Yeah. Right. Okay, so the High Rock donation is in the gifts and donations. Correct. And by chance, do you know how much that is? I know, but I'm guessing that's probably 15000 like it was last year, yeah. but I don't know that. Okay. Just curious. Actually, Let's just see. nosy. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it's awfully good with them. Okay. Were there any other questions? I don't have any, but okay. I don't know if you all do. Okay, next. Okay, so and we voted that. So now we can go to Rec and Rink, which is, um, the Rec is on page 181. If you look on page 183, Uh, line item 5102, salaries and wages temp is most, that increase is mostly the increase in minimum wage. Minimum wage? Yes. All right, 
Line item 5203, data processing expenses, has nothing in it after 2013 because they eliminated the title of that line item. Um, line item 5283. Wait a minute, can oh, you sorry. repeat that again? Yes. The uh, data processing expenses line item no longer exists which is 5203, which is why there's nothing in it. Okay. All right, the reservoir expense chlorine, 528912. Um, I've had to use extra chlorine. The next line item, the Gibbs School Gym, is because there's a new lease and a new cleaning service. That increase is because of that. Um, let, let me yep. interrupt just a second. Yep. Uh, I, I meant to pass this around to begin with. Uh, this is a brochure each year. Uh, you might want to look at it. It's quite quite nice brochure, I think, that, they, that he puts out. He's quite entrepreneurial in terms of the things he offers. They all go ahead. I'm sorry. That's okay. All right, down towards the bottom, the credit card processing is both credit card processing and custodial charges, in case you were thinking that was high for credit card processing. And custodial what? S custodial charges. Instead of credit card processing. It's both. It's both. We yeah. just didn't want you to think it was only credit card processing. I wonder how they figured out that both of those things it's should go together. together. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Probably because they have, uh, they charge people for custodial processing. Oh, those yes. For if they rent out space. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. That makes sense. Um, okay. So, if you go down to the bottom, they believe for, the, for 2015 they will be in the black about 10,000. That two two thousand two eleven uh, at the very bottom. Uh, right, on, that's on for twenty sixteen. Yeah, but for twenty fifteen, it'll, it'll be ten thousand. Is what they expect. About ten k. As opposed to thirty eight. Correct. Okay. okay. Yes, right. they expect to do better than Sorry. what was listed. Okay. Yeah. Mary Margaret, is that because of better revenue or savings on the costs? could be any of that, okay, but just the way, I mean, it's hard to manage all those things when, I mean, because got you've got stuff, pears, yeah. all kinds of stuff. Right. You know, the different programs balance. for the different seasons and when the money comes in and when it gets processed and then how it gets distributed. Um, I mean, you, you just take a look at some of the different things they got going there and he balances it all. I mean, right. he really right. is almost a magician in terms of keeping it all going. But to that point, one of the um, the kid care program has um, been quite successful. So they have a licensed preschool for 20 kids um, and for 78 kids from K to fifth grade. And they bus the kids from, you know, all the schools over to the Gibbs gym. Um, let's see. So what else did I want to tell you about that? Oh, on the on that page, on page 184, with the revenues, if you look at line item 428940, it should say spring program income, not rec program income. Um, and then with that kids care revenue line item 428919, um, because the program has been so successful, they're rolling more funds back into the enterprise fund. Uh, let's see, what else? They just started the reservoir concession stand, which so there's no history there. And the Gibbs rental income, 428913. They decreased it from this current year because I think that's just a more realistic number. Um, let's see. I'm sorry, the rental 
Gibbs, the Gibbs rental income, 428913. Okay. The reason it was reduced, you're just trying to be more realistic. Um, let's see, what else? You know, he's working on, you know, coming up with more and more programs. Um, it'd be great to have more space for the um, preschool and the after school programs because they've been quite successful. And let's see, what else do we want to say? That his number from the rec reserve fund was 135167 Okay, once more? 135000 167. Okay. I, I, I yeah. guess an, another statement is that he, he sort of operates the way that department stores do at Christmas time. He's completely dependent upon uh, promises from people for the recreation program in the summer. And all those promises come over the next two months or so. so you know, he, he sort of doesn't know where he is for sure until uh, all these, uh, what shall I call them, uh, applications for the summer programs. Okay, and then Christine had asked a question about, um, let's see, the amount for playing, the playing field maintenance. <coughs> I think what, what he said, help me remember this, he said that um, the rec pays for fees and expenses over and above the 40000 What is it, do you know where this show, that shows up in the, in the um, budget? Yeah, I don't know. In, in his budget or in, in, in your budget? In, in your budget. In our budget. I, I uh, he's, oh, I think what he said was, Turf maintenance, it was, uh, uh, and it was, it was one of these. I don't remember what you said. Could you repeat your question again, Christina? Uh, there. The DPW pay, has traditionally been paying 40000 for <coughs> field maintenance with the understanding that Parks and Rec pays uh, the rest. And this year, the DPW budget has been increased, and I was curious as to what, how much Rec is paying for, fee, for field maintenance. How much did it go up by? Christine said DPWs went up 10,000. Yeah. Okay. So I was curious as to right. how, what is happening. He didn't think that budget. that was a, um, I, I have to go back and ask him this question because it didn't come out exactly that way that he pays, um, that he didn't have a deal like that. It may have looked that way, but he didn't have a deal that he owned always paid. He said that he's been paying 32000 annually and that it's for, he supplements the turf maintenance. Which line item would that be? Yeah. Yeah. Right, and I, I forgot he told us that. Yeah, Do you remember what he right. said? Yeah, I, I, we both missed it. All right, we'll... Uh, it's got to be a multiple line item. Uh, no, he put it in... Okay, are there any other questions, Alan? Uh, a few months ago, a report came out with a lot of recommendations to make the uh, parks more accessible. Oh, he's been yeah. doing that all along. Okay, I was just wondering, I, mean, the, 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 I heard some fairly significant amounts of money to yep. build ramps and sidewalks and things. Is that, how's that being funded? Yeah. Capital. Capital. Okay. Anybody else? 
Okay, could we, uh, why don't we vote the budget and then if you can on Wednesday just get back to us mm -hmm. to answer Christine. Yeah, I thought I wrote it down, sorry. No. Okay. A lot of numbers. All right, so what I'm suggesting is we vote the expenses 602789, the revenues of 605000, with the balance of 2211. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any further questions or discussion? Tom? I have one. Um, on these salaries, uh, Conley, is that shared from both departments? The rec yeah, the rec and rank. All those, you'll see all those names pop up again. Dave, Linsky, Burke, and Conley are all split between the rank and the rec. Is it shown here what the percentages? Yes. Like, like it say, it'll say Have Joe Conley, FTE. Director of Recreation, is half yeah. of an FTE. And then when you get to the rink, he's the other half oh. of the FTE. Yeah. Okay, are there any other questions on this budget? Okay, we have a motion for made and seconded. Um, and uh, Aaron Margaret will get back the information on the field maintenance uh, on Wednesday. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? And this three, two. Okay, and now the rink? Yes. And just to tell you, I did talk to the manager today. If he had checked on the amount of snow on the roof. Yeah, that's the first thing he told us. We checked that today, yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, so apparently they had snow guards on the roof, and Mike Burns was just up there inspecting it and said it's fine. Yeah. And we looked, too. It didn't look like much at all. Much less than on my roof. <laughs> I guess there's a lot of wind blows it, yeah. blows it off. So. Okay, so... Um, if you look on page 189, the salary and wages for temps, those temps are mostly running the cashier um, booth and the concession stand. The equipment buildings and grounds is, includes the boiler and the Zamboni. Um, and you notice that he bump that up to 25,000 because that's a more realistic number, particularly if you look back at 2013 and 2014. Um, the 5233, the security alarm system lease, they renegotiated um, a new contract. So that's why the cost of that went down. The 5290, the concession, concession stand for the rink, is a separate concession stand, just in case that was confusing. Um, the debt service is as printed, 83,000. They've been continuing to do that. Um, and the payment to DCR, who owns the rink, That's what that payment is for. No longer a dollar. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> so and it's caught up now. Right. If you look that we had that big hit in 2014 because of a misunderstanding of when the leasing agreement started. So everybody's caught up. Everybody's good with that. Um, he does expect that the DCR payment will have to go up 2% after 2017. And the rink in FY17 will need um, electrical and more ADA updates. The locker rooms need to be upgraded. And, okay, um, what else do I want to say about that? And he said the reserve fund for the rink is 75177 75000 
Right, so if you look on page 190, um, the only things I wanted to point out was um, the vending machines, they lowered the prices, so 13,000 is a more realistic number. Under marketing, that had decreased also because there's been a decrease in the board advertising on the you know, inside of the rink. Um, partially because Hollaback and Coughlin is gone, mm. and they used to advertise. So you can see there on the salary detail, the other half of the people, or the other portion of the people, is well, the portion between the rink and the rack. And that's all I have to say about the rink. Do you have more to say about the rink? Okay, you're recommending as presented? Yes, the 19,613. The 5290 concession stand, I assume that is the materials that they sell? Yeah, let's see, no. Yeah, the, is that what you're asking? In, in, in the food. Yeah, right, yeah. right. Okay, are there any questions on the rink? Jonathan? Just one, Mary Margaret, the uh, increase on the tent salary and wages. Yes. Okay. When we, we have to, I'm just being clear about when we we, the DCR transferred the rate to us as a constituent, whatever. In addition to the nominal payment, we also had a commitment for, I think, significant capital improvements over a, a long period of time. Are we still on course to meet those obligations? Yes. Do you want to answer that? Uh, yeah, we're we're spending capital money on the building, so <coughs> it's it's not. There's, there's a couple of problems with it. First of all, um, the uh, capital expenditures that are shown here, the capital outlay, um, the, the debt service on 5871, mm -hmm. that's only that's less than half the debt service of the. Uh, of the most recent capital expenditures. <coughs> and I'm not sure, in fact, I'm, I'm sure that all of the items that Mary Margaret just mentioned are not going to move forward in the capital plan, um, at least not immediately. You mean the electrical and the ADA and that, those so, things? Some of them are, so yeah. not, not all of them. Before. Okay. So the, the answer is, yeah, that we have money, we are funding it, but not, not all of it. Or at least not at the rate that he would like. Let's put it that right. Way. So the ADA <coughs> you do have to do, don't you? <coughs> oh, we're meeting. Up. We're at least meeting the obligation of yeah. the PCR. They can all yeah. yes. agree and yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, we'll the the new maintenance your maintenance subcommittee, if I can call it that, are, are they are they going to uh, take into account these kinds of things for the rink? Well, I mean, I, you know, I think the uh, the electrical is, is not a maintenance issue. It's replacing entire okay. chunks of the electrical equipment. Okay. The, uh, I'm trying to remember, we, we bought a new Zamboni a couple of years ago. Yeah. That's an entirely new piece of equipment, so right. it's not maintenance per se. Okay, but, but he, he is likely to have maintenance issues over, you know, over time. I yeah, but he's been funding them so far internally. Okay, but I, I thought that, you know, that the, whole, the whole idea of the maintenance plan is to get ahead of all that kind of thing. Well, I think the idea of the maintenance right. plan is to, first of all, figure out what, we have to, what we're spending now and what we have to spend. Yeah. And that's going to be a multi-year process. Okay. But, but this is down on the scale as opposed to other things, I guess. Is that right? Is that no. No, I think it's, uh, it's under the town manager and there's a committee and it's moving forward. Okay, but... The rink is included there. Yeah, I think they plan to hire a director of maintenance in a year or so. Yeah. You know, they, they'll, they'll be a separate department. Uh, so yeah. a department head reporting to the manager okay. on maintenance. I mean, for all, all the stuff that Mary and Margaret do, that's the 
Cemetery with the biggest kind of maintenance yeah, issues. There's issues all over town. Yeah, okay. But from our point of view, yeah. you know, that's one that I hope would be addressed as well as other ones. Okay, other questions, Alan? Just for, for clarification over for Charlie, the uh, capital expenses in rink and recreation are fully funded through the enterprise funds over time. So no. 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 So, no. so it's a general the, fund. This, so this 83,000, uh, I'm just doing this from memory, but yeah. I think yeah. the, the existing debt service in the capital budget, this is the number that you <coughs> see that's, you know, for past debt. That's the eighty-three thousand dollars. No, it's about two hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars for the for the rink. That's all they could afford to pay. This is all they can afford to pay. So we take that, and you s you'll see it in the capital budget. Something that says like like transfer from rink yeah. or something like that. Should that subsidy be brought out in the enterprise fund budgets? I don't know. We that's talked a, about it. That's we talked about it before town meeting. Yeah, that's a that's a philosophical question. Uh, I mean, the town the, the town has an obligation to fund these capital items under the contract with the DCR. So, you know, that's above my yeah. pay grade. Okay. Well, uh, I mean, what we could do is simply footnote debt service and say balance balance of debt service for capital projects included uh, included in the capital budget, just so people know there's other expenses. So, you know, if, if you want to do that for transparency, you know, it's... Okay, I, I'll ask Charlie. Yeah, I'll try we'll to put get... A put now, this is 83000 in debt service out of a total of, which is funded from the general fund. That's all right. That means we have to give you that total every year? Once I get it in there, it never goes away. <laughs> no, no, but changes every year, too. Well, yeah. Right. Well, I think if you give an approximate, yeah. you know, of approximately 225000 You have that number. You just have to Oh, yeah, but it's those. somewhere buried in, you know, 10,000 numbers. It's I don't need to worry that, about yeah. that. Okay, is there any other questions on yeah. the uh, on the ring? Tom? Dolly, when we, when we did this lease with the DCL, we had to come up with a maintenance yeah. plan as part of our bid over so many years because we were bidding against it was FMC. Are we on schedule with that plan? I don't know that we're on schedule, but we've been. Yeah, we've yeah I mean, we've, been, we've been doing the items. Right. But we're doing the they're items okay. that we, we told them we were yeah. going to. And they came, in, they, they came in and they met with the town, so they're happy. Right. Okay, are there any other questions on the rink? Okay, uh, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, moved and seconded for 597087 in expenses, revenue 616700, uh, surplus of 19613. Uh, any additional questions or discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? 3215. Mayor Norger, do you have any others? Uh, no, I'm all done, except for the quest to the quest. Okay, so you'll get back to us. Yep. Okay, now, uh, on the 4th, on Wednesday, we have the planning director coming in uh, to discuss the master plan, uh, fo focusing on the financial section. Uh, who will be ready with budgets on Wednesday? You'll have? Five. five. Okay. Well, four and reclass. Okay, and, and you handed out the reclass. Yes. Okay, so and you got that. You also should have gotten an updated IT as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you'll have others? And if you look at the reclass and you're thinking, what the heck is this? I have a code um, great report next week in blue so that you understand why things are listed in three different places or two places or no places. I have 10 of those I can make some more by next week. Okay, I'm going to, uh, so we'll, we'll have the discussion with the master plan. We'll go to Carolyn and get all hers done plus the reclass. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the warrant, I'm going to run the warrant articles and we'll see if we can get, you know, uh, some other ones of those done. Um, do you think, 
by chance, uh, Charlie, we could do those retirement fund, those two articles? If you have a chance. The, the one on old tab and the... Uh, okay. There'll be those. Okay, now I suppose uh, you'll be doing the old tab, right? Yes. Okay, so we'll have that discussion about whether that 92800 or something goes into the OPEB fund or goes into the snow and ice. Uh, so we'll, we can have that. All right, I'll get ready for that discussion. <laughs> okay, John? Have we decided on a Saturday yet? Or a Saturday meeting? Um, well, there's no Saturday meeting this time. Um, you know, if I was going to guess, uh, now next Monday, We've got nothing. So public works, we we can do probably everything except maybe two divisions in the. I'm and sorry. We can probably do most of the public works um, budget except for those two divisions regarding facilities and public and. and okay, so DPW. Uh, what what other budgets can we get by Monday? Um, we'll probably get an inspectional services. Okay, inspection. How about street lights and all those? Yeah, that would be. Oh, DW. that's in that, That's in your budget. That's right. Okay, so you can get everything but those couple budgets. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other? Uh, what budgets are you going to have, Carolyn? So I have um, HR reclass, IT, retirement, OPEB. Okay. Uh, okay. If we if we can get those, plus if anybody can come up with any others, uh, and I'll try to run the uh, run the Warren article. Uh, we'll see what we can do, and then I'll let you know about. You know, I I don't want to come in here on Saturday either. So uh, now on the 11th, we have the manager coming in um, on several different issues, and then the 16th is capital budget. Uh, I have the manager coming in on the 18th too, but I'm going to try to convince them to squeeze everything in. School committee on the 23rd, and then the 25th and 30th to wrap up everything. So uh, let's see if we can move along. And uh, you know, I don't think we'll need it the, the 14th, but maybe the 28th. But we'll see. Any other business? Meeting adjourned. Mm -hmm.